this video, I'm sharing with you guys two overlooked but very necessary must-have hair care items that you probably want to start investing in uh, ASAP. And of course, you guys already know how we do it on this channel. We're going to be going through some of the scientific research behind the benefits that these items provide for your hair. And I'll also be sharing with you guys some of my favorite products within these categories. So make sure you stick around to the end of this video because you don't want to miss this. As always, I'll be in the comments for the first 45 minutes after this video drops, so feel free to slide into my comments section before, during, or after this video, and we can have a little chit chat, okay? Now when it comes to hair care, there are lots of things that we can safely do without, without it affecting our hair negatively. However, there are some things that regardless of your hair type, product preferences or your lifestyle will make a significant difference to the health and the preservation of your hair. Now whilst these two items that I'm about to talk about in this video are being adopted by an increasing number of people, they are still seen as things that one can afford to substitute or do without entirely. And granted, your hair may not fall off if you don't use these items. Well, not all at once anyway. But incorporating these items as staples in your regimen can make an immediate, tangible, and significant long-term improvement to the health of your hair. So the first of these two items that I wanna talk about today is silk. So here's the thing about me, you guys. I actually love to wear my hair out. However, as you guys know, it is most of the time in a bun. And that's just because the feeling of my ends chafing against 95% of my clothes, which are cotton, really makes me cringe. But you guys can clearly see that I am dressed the part today. If we're gonna talk the talk, then let's walk the walk, okay? Can I get an amen, somebody? This little fit right here, this little fit right here is courtesy of Lily Silk. As you can see, it is giving luxury. It's giving, it's giving Bruno Mars featuring Fops in Leave the Door Open, the remix. What you doing? Where you going? Oh, you got plans. Don't say that. You guys would honestly never even guess that this thing is supposed to be a sleep cap because, <laughs> sis, I'm wearing this out. Out, out. Before I get into any further product details, let's get into the science behind why I would consider silk a must-have hair care item. The thing about silk material is that it's essentially made up of proteins and amino acids, but not any old proteins. No ma'am. Silk has a very high content of serine as well as glycine. And because I know that what I'm saying isn't actually currently making sense, here's a list of the top 10 amino acids found in hair in rough order of amount. I think you see where I'm going with this. Interestingly enough, this is why it's not at all uncommon to see silk protein or silk amino acids used in your favorite deep conditioners. This is a huge part of why silk is such an agreeable fabric choice for a lot of people with different hair types and different skin conditions. But I don't wanna jump the gun because we're gonna come back to this a little bit later. Now, not only is silk made up of some good hair and skin friendly amino acids and proteins, but the fibers themselves are evidently extremely smooth, especially when compared to other commonly used fabrics like cotton, wool, or even cashmere. I mean, just take a look at this image comparing microscopic fibers of commonly used fabrics. Now, of course, having gotten silk pillowcases for myself, you know I was gonna try this out myself. So what I did was I went and I grabbed one of my Lily silk pillowcases as well as one of my standard cotton pillowcases and I put them both under a microscope. And it's very plain to see which of the two fabrics would cause the least amount of friction to my hair when slept on. Now, especially for people who have curlier, coilier, afro-textured hair types that naturally already have less cuticle layers than other ethnic hair types, it is absolutely imperative that we do whatever we can to preserve the state of our cuticle layer. And one of the major ways that we can do this is by making sure that we reduce friction wherever possible. Think about it. For almost eight hours every single night, your hair is constantly rubbing against this material. And if that material is as rough or as abrasive as say cotton, for example, every single movement is accumulating more and more damage to your cuticle layer. You guys, eight hours is not a small amount of time. And this is why I think that having a silk pillowcase or sleep scarf or sleep cap that has an extremely smooth surface is simply non-negotiable. Listen. Okay, there are already enough problematic things happening in this 2021. Let's not add to the madness, please. Because ultimately, a smoother surface will mean less friction, meaning less chafing and less damage done to your cuticle layer in the immediate term and the long term, which obviously translates to less split ends, less breakage, and ultimately better general hair health and improved length retention. Now for all my people that struggle with skin and or scalp conditions, I'm talking itching, inflammation, eczema, psoriasis, seborrheic dermatitis, matter of fact, any kind of dermatitis. If you are not sawed on silk for any other reason, be sawed on it for this. 
At the beginning of this video, I mentioned that silk is one of the more agreeable fabrics for a range of different skin types. Now, this is because silk is arguably one of the most hypoallergenic fabrics that you can get. So that means it will not irritate or aggravate your allergies or your skin conditions any further. Matter of fact, I'll do you one better. Studies have shown that when worn all day for a consecutive period of eight weeks, with no additional medication or ointments whatsoever, patients with atopic dermatitis showed a significant improvement of their skin conditions. Solely just from wearing silk. I mean, just look at this one patient's improvement pictures after wearing only 100% silk clothing for only four weeks. Now these results had actually previously been replicated in studies on children, so the moral of the story is, everybody out here has gotta get on the silk, okay? Everybody, the whole family needs to get on the silk. Now, especially for you mums out there that have kids that are prone to things like cradle cap or seborrheic dermatitis, which is actually really common for young children. Using silk bedding or silk clothing, silk sleep caps, silk scarves, are a really good natural way for you to start treating the problem without having to go through any medication or medicated ointments that could further aggravate your child's skin. Listen. There's no need to thank me. Really, there's no need. What I'm gonna need you to do for yourself, what I'm gonna need you to do for yourself right now, is I'm gonna need you to click that Lily Silk link in my description box and get yourself some 100% pure mulberry silk. Now, all of their products are also Oikotech Standard 100 certified, which basically just means it's legit. So it's eco-friendly and it contains no toxins or any other harmful chemicals or substances that could be harmful or irritating to the human body. Now, I currently have some of their pillowcases, shirts, and or silk caps, but they do have a really wide range of silk items so you're never really going to be low on options whether you're looking for bedding sleepwear or clothing and like you guys really need more reasons i've also included a little discount code that you can use site-wide to sweeten the deal so at this point sis do the right thing now moving on to must-have hair care item number two and that is none other than a microwavable heat cap so if you've ever deep conditioned your hair with a microwavable heat cap, or any kind of heat cap for that matter, you will have already experienced the tangible difference that it makes to the condition of your hair. Now that's all fine and dandy. But why do I consider this one specific thing a must-have hair care item? I hear you ask. Well, dear. Research has shown that when heat is applied to the hair whilst deep conditioning, this actually helps the conditioning ingredients to adsorb to the hair. Note, I did not say absorb, but adsorb. Absorption is a descriptive term for when a material soaks up a substance, whilst adsorption describes when the substance sticks to the surface of that particular material, as opposed to penetrating it. Okay, if you're enjoying this video so far, please go ahead and hit that like button for me. You might as well also hit that subscribe button for me, seeing as you're already down there, especially if you don't want to miss out on any more science-backed hair care videos from me. Many thanks. Now for added context, it is adsorption that is almost entirely responsible for how soft, smooth, manageable, or to use the catch-all phrase that is more commonly used to describe this feeling, how moisturized your hair feels after you deep condition. So if the logic follows, this would simply translate to a greater amount of adsorption, a greater conditioning effect, and or benefit to the hair. Take this particular study, for example, that examined the effect of temperatures up to 35 degrees on hair when conditioning it with solutions of quaternium 26 and sericonium chloride as well as a solution of lord ammonium hydrolyzed wheat protein all very common ingredients that you would typically find in your deep conditioners so what they found was that there was an increase in adsorption of all these conditioning ingredients to the hair at the higher temperatures as when compared to the lower temperatures, with the highest amount of adsorption occurring at 35 degrees centigrade. Unsurprisingly, they also found that the amount of adsorption increased on hair that was damaged versus hair that was not. So this would include things like high porosity hair, bleached hair, chemically processed hair, or really any kind of hair that has undergone any kind of mechanical wear and tear. And this is simply because damaged hair sites have a strong negative electric charge that positively charged conditioners simply cannot resist. So the more damage that exists along the hair shaft, the higher the overall negative charge and the more area there is for the conditioner to bind strongly to. Finally, they found that the most adsorption occurred when these conditioning solutions were left on the hair for up to 30 minutes, as opposed to a shorter amount of time. And anything above 30 minutes didn't actually prove any significant increase in adsorption rate. Now, if you want to apply this research to start seeing immediate tangible results in your hair, you have two options. You could either a, go through the stress of heating up your conditioner Bain-Marie style and monitor the temperature with a candy thermometer, or B, save yourself the hassle and use the much less time consuming option of a microwavable heat cap. Now you guys may have caught this little bad boy in my previous video and it's really just a bog standard flaxseed microwavable cap that you can get off Amazon. Now I've also gone ahead and put country specific links for this microwavable heat cap in the description box below so you can go ahead and check those out depending on where it is that you are based. Look, you guys, 
Having always had high porosity hair, I never actually used to condition with heat for the longest time. And that was mainly because I knew that having high porosity hair already meant that my hair would have a higher conditioner absorption rate anyway. So I really just banked on that. But once I decided to add that final layer of using heat to deep condition my hair, girl. Not only did it make much more of a difference to the manageability, smoothness, softness of my hair than I actually thought it would, but this was also one of the things that greatly contributed to my hair's moisture retention abilities, such that at this point, if I re-moisturize my hair once during the week, that's more than average. Seriously, don't play yourself. This thing is a staple that everyone should have. If you don't remember anything else, just remember that the sweet spot is 30 for 30. The first thing that you want to do is to create an environment that the conditioner sitting in your hair can be brought up to a temperature of about 30 to 35 degrees, and then let it sit for no more or no less than 30 minutes. The thing I love about these two items is that they work to the benefit of your hair, regardless of your hair type. On one hand, if you have high porosity hair, they help to make your hair more manageable and prevent your hair from deteriorating or accumulating damage as quickly as it otherwise would have. And on the flip side, if you have low porosity hair, this helps to preserve the already intact nature and integrity of your hair's cuticle layer. Not to mention that both of these items go a really long way to reducing the amount of friction that's happening on your cuticles, whilst encouraging your cuticle layer to lay flat, which helps to reduce unnecessary frizz as well as boost your hair's natural sheen. So listen, everybody's winning. Clearly, you guys already know how I feel about these products, but I want to know what you guys think. One, do you guys have experience with either of these must-have items? And two, if you do, did you find that they made any noticeable improvements to your hair or not so much? Otherwise, if you'd like to know more about my favorite products, then what you want to do is you want to go ahead and click this video on the screen right here. But that's all from me today, guys. Really hope that you picked up a helpful tip or two from this video. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye. Mwah.